Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question is Frederick, which language would take over if Java disappeared today? So let's get into it. Well, there is only one language that can possibly fill the uh, today fill what Java is, is doing. And it's already doing it on par with Java. It's pr I wouldn't be surprised if, if it's not already on equal ground or going to pass it in some fashion. And that is bum -ba -da -bum, C Sharp and the .NET framework. Yes, did you think I was going to say Go? Oh, that's sweet. No, it's not Go. It's not going to be Go for a very long time. C sharp for sure. It's not. E I would even argue that it's not. E there is no contender apart from like Java and C sharp are r the only two players in the enterprise world. Where you know, if we're talking about just mass adoption here, I'm not talking about working for Google. I'm not talking about working for the trendiest startups. I'm talking about large scale, pro like just the broad part of the entire industry. Because that's the thing that a lot of people forget when we talk about popularity. Popularity is a very subjective thing, but what I think is very important to consider is who, uh, what is the, what are the more conservative companies using? Because the thing is that Although maybe Google is using, say go, say, go or something like that. Remember that Google is an IT company. It, and I mean, it's their language. The same thing goes for Rust. It goes for most of these more trendy popular, popular languages that people like to talk, like to talk about. Because that's the beautiful thing about popularity, right? Everybody talks about you, but being popular doesn't necessarily mean that you are the biggest player. It's kind of funny because the thing that is used by absolutely everybody, that's the boring thing. That's not what, no, that's what everybody is using, but everybody is using it so nobody likes to talk about it because it's so boring. And that is C-sharp and that is Java. They are the boring dominant, dominant titans of the programming industry. It's not even a competition. If you look at the metrics for job postings, you will see very clearly that C Sharp and Java are way uh, together with JavaScript, but they are way, way, way over the curve of the other languages. I mean, it's, uh, they are so dominant and they are for a good reason. They are, they are pretty much at where, where they are today, because, partly because they've been around for quite a long time, but also because they're solving the fundamental and most important problem that business has, and that is not innovation. Innovation is something that the IT companies such as Google, Facebook and these other large startups or whatever you want to call them, these companies are, ba and they basically, that's basically what they have done. They have basically created, they have made it so far on the fact that they have understood the value of innovation, they understand the value of technology and pushing things and being innovative and all of this good stuff, right? But, and although it is true that the bigger companies may or may not, you know, start to, I mean, everybody models something after practices that the main super companies have developed at this point. I mean, something in you, most likely in your own work process is modeled in some fashion after what, after what Google does. It doesn't, mustn't, doesn't have to be what they are doing today, but they did it at some point that they popularized it or it's Facebook or somebody. Most companies do. They see these super successes and they want a piece of that. The problem is that they were successful way before Google was successful. And that's the thing I think is important here. I've worked for com uh, one of the big companies that I worked for. Have been, uh, it's been around for longer than Google. It's older than Google, and it was much, much, much bigger than Google when Google started. And if you think about the, t the amount of investment that goes into these really large systems, the, and w where they came from originally, which was an era where the businesses sat and basically had board discussions about technology stacks and so forth. I mean, this entire idea of open source, all, that, all this stuff, it didn't even exist. And in those times, what was most important was stability and maintainability. They needed to be able to get people who knew a platform. They needed that platform to absolutely have everything, everything they wanted 
to be able to do. Stability was key, right? Because stability means that from an administrative administration per, um, perspective, you can very consistently deliver results. It doesn't have to be the coolest thing in the world, because cool wasn't really a thing back in those days. It was more about shipping value features. That's the thing. And it's only in the last 10 years, maybe 15 years at tops, where this mindset has changed and we've gone towards a more chaotic and diverse ecosystem of languages. But I think it's pretty interesting to still see that the tradition, like the languages such as C Sharp and, and Java are still dom most, the most dominant players in the job market. And as I said, they are because they were around, they, they offered the solution that the enterprise enterprises of the world, the real, really big companies, the, their problem they're solving. That's exactly what these languages are developed to do. They solve big business problems. They can be used for small businesses as well, but they're really good at providing this st very stable platform. So what I want you to take away from this is that if Java goes away today, the, on, like, the only other option I would see that can, me that can measure up is C Sharp. And I'm pretty sure that there are more than a few people out there who will claim that C Sharp and the .NET framework is, have surpa has surpassed Java uh, since a while back. And I'm, I don't doubt that at all. It, Java is slow, really slow. I, it's, uh, I mean, Microsoft has made some fairly massive contributions, uh, contributions to, to their platform in, in, in the past years. But, and Java, I mean, it's not like they're not doing anything. It's more that, that's my gut feeling anyway. It, it feels like Microsoft is putting in even more innovation and work into the platform than what Oracle is. But maybe that will change because there are a few things happening in Java as well. We'll see. Have a great day.